This is a pay on media production. The following podcast on the Your Own Pay Podcast Network will contain adult content. Listener discretion is advised. More information about this episode can be found at yourownpay.com. <laughs> hey, bro, let's get into this thing. It's Demasi and Michael just talking tech. Interrupt me. If, I mean, it's not a huge deal unless it becomes overwhelming to you, but I do want to know if you hear that clicking noise again. Uh, and I unplugged the Raspberry Pi during recording because I was thinking about it and I said, you know, that Raspberry Pi that does radio stuff might possibly be screwing with some of my network stuff. I don't, I don't know it. It could be a frequency thing though, more so than a, yeah, yeah. So I figured, you know. Try one thing at a time. That's the troubleshooting rule. That is. That's the problem with troubleshooting, though, is is try one thing at a time. <laughs> Takes forever. It does, but it's better than you do, like, four different things, and then whatever the problem is you're trying to solve is fixed, and mm-hmm. then you don't really know how you fixed it. And then when you encounter it again, you're like, what did I do last time? Yeah. Because maybe two of the four things you did last time aren't even a factor anymore. And you're like, well, maybe it's these two things, but it turns out not to be those two things. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh, well, shit, I don't know what I did. You recording locally or not yet? Yep, I already started. Sweet. Sweet. So Also testing recording you locally since I got you coming out of Channel 4 huh. to see how that how that comes out. I think we tried that once before. and you I got don't no think I'll try it since I had the board. Uh, I may have tried it in Reaper. Yeah, 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 I'm doing an that. audio hijack at the moment. Okay, okay. Uh, so I realized that my local recording would. So my setup is I have a template in Reaper. By the way, side note: Reaper templates are amazing. I think it's been a while since we talked about Reaper. Reaper <laughs> templates are freaking amazing. <laughs> like I edit well, now. I'm editing, not counting ours, two other podcasts on a regular basis ironically enough i don't have a template for our podcast but that's that's the way of the world man yeah yeah it is but it makes my job of editing these other two podcasts super easy because i open the template and it has the intro and the outro file roughly towards where the end of the podcast will be so i can just nudge it over into place and i don't have to find any files so that's super nice but i have another template called voip and how that works, I, I've mentioned this a couple of times, but now I'm more confident in my setup. I have channel one set up to go into a track in Reaper, and then I have the output of that track going back to channel one. So if I want to hear myself, I turn on aux one and I can hear myself because my headphones are plugged into aux one. I might change that around in the near future, but that's besides the point. Then uh, I have that track boosted to 20 dB. And it's armed, so that way monitoring works, and that's how monitoring gets the output. And then I press the master button on track one, and I tell any app, including CleanFeed, which we're using right now, to grab audio from the uh, master LR, which is also 1314, right? So Mm -hmm. though that sounded confusing, what I realized is if I press R and actually record, because I wasn't recording on that track, but if I press R, then I'm recording at plus 20 dB. Mm. Uh, That's not good. (laughs) Nope. (laughs) So what I ended up doing is I dropped that down to plus 10 dB. So Reaper's getting plus 10 dB, which I think I can even bring it down to zero and it shouldn't peak. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, It didn't in the past, but then I went into clean feed and boosted my audio plus six dB uh, so should balance out roughly in clean feed. Am I sounding about the same as what I sounded earlier today? Yeah. Maybe a little lower. Uh, you're, you're, you're good. I've been messing with this slider over here and bringing you down a little bit, but that's more so that I don't get any bleed. Nah. But no, you sound good where you're at actually. Good. 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 So that's shit. Yet another thing that maybe could impact. <laughs> Every little thing I do could have a a positive impact on my experience. So for people who don't know what happened, let me let me explain what's been going on. Uh, actually, tell me your audio thing, and then we'll explain my audio issue. 
This is a side note too. That's a handy feature of Clean Feed is the ability to boost the audio coming into Clean Feed directly so that you don't have to have people, you know, messing around with audio settings on their end. And you can boost it substantially. Yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, yes you can. I don't think it made it to the recording the first time I messed with. It. I was like, "Well, oh, I know this board is low, so let me just do plus twelve. And Mark's yeah. like, "Holy shit!" Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yep. So what I was doing audio wise, I was just messing with uh cameo, uh not cameo, camo, camo studio. Um, ah. <laughs> so I plugged the phone up, the iPhone, because I remember I mentioned to you earlier today that I realized that the iPhone would. Uh, Camo Studio can use the iPhone's microphone uh, as well as using the phone as a camera. Uh, for people who don't know, Camo Studio is a tool from Reincubate Software. Uh, and what it what it basically allows you to do is plug in your iPhone to a Mac or Windows computer. So it's cross-platform in that way. It doesn't go to Linux. Sorry, guys. Uh, 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 huh? iPhone or Android. Yeah, iPhone uh, or Android phone. And use that as a webcam input for things like Zoom, Skype, uh, Google Meet, all of, I would say most services out there that are available, uh, with the exception, funnily enough, of FaceTime. Well, I guess if you're an Apple, longtime Apple user, you won't be surprised if FaceTime is <laughs> out of that list. Uh, but with the iPhone specifically, it can also make use of the onboard microphones available on your, your phone. So for my particular phone, which is the iPhone XR, I only have the front facing or back facing camera as camera options. And I have the bottom microphone, which is the one we typically are using when we're doing speaker phone calls or holding the phone up to your head. Who does that anymore? And, or the, camera's microphone which is up near the camera lens i think Uh, i'm not 100 percent certain where that particular uh microphone happens to be so i decided to when i came in flip uh clean feed over to using camo studios microphone to pull from the iphone's uh mic and see how it sounded Wait, you're not doing that right now, though, are you? No, I'm not. Okay, doing that. okay. No. I'm like, I want to know what fucking microphone you're using on the camera, <laughs> on the phone. <laughs> I have a project where someone only uses a phone to record, and I need that microphone enabled. Yeah, so maybe on the newer phones, you may get even better quality because starting, I think, with your phone, uh, the the 11, 11 Pro series of phones, I think they have more microphones uh, hmm. in them uh, than does my phone. Because you got to remember, my phone was released mm, not with the 8, so the year after the 8. So around with the 10S, ah. with the 10Ss and the first 10 series max size phone that they had, uh, which I think at the time was 6.5 inches, not the 6.7 hmm. that the Pro Maxes are today. But yeah. It just sounds so big. So here's the thing. That phone is huge, but it's actually comfortable in my the, the Pro Max because Tia has the 12 Pro Max for people who are new to the show. Uh, she has the 12 Pro Max, and it is huge. The thing I don't like about the big phones because they actually fit comfortable in my hands because I don't have small hands. But my problem is they're so long. Mm. If they were made more, that is one thing that I did like about the notes. I, I played around with the notes over the years, uh, usually for different testing uh, projects that I was a part of. But the Galaxy Notes, or at least the original kind of first run of them in the early teens, were they were big, but they weren't long. Like Apple's phones tend to be much, much taller than they are wide, whereas the Galaxy Note series of phones weren't perfectly square but they were more in proportion so there wasn't quite as much difference in the height and the width you got a much wider phone and a little bit shorter than what an apple phone would be so which we'll talk about that in a minute stay tuned because there is an advantage that apple has made that i appreciate demasi bringing to my attention so you don't have to do what demasi calls the phone shimmy to actually make something happen <laughs> we'll talk about that in a moment so i could not trademark that phone shimmy though i got that from uh i think john syracuse on atp uh, all right same thing. yeah yeah so so good 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 uh, uh analogy because i like it it's how i explain it to people now so good to know that it wasn't you that that trademarked that oh <laughs> 
<laughs> but back to what audio issues I was having. For those who don't know, in DM78, so the episode prior to this one, uh, there was some clicking sounds in my audio, and you may or may not have heard that for the first 10 to 12 minutes of the episode. And then I remembered, hey, I was recording locally. Let's see how my local audio sounded, because we were using the clean feed audio for that episode. And then I was on a, my Kelly Co. Kelly and Company segment through Accessible Media Incorporated live at 2.10 p.m. on Monday afternoons or 11.10 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, and it, it, it gave me the same clicking sound because I go back and I listen to my content just in case someone said something that I missed and I was just on my own rampage. And I like to hear my own self talk. I'm, I'm slightly conceited. I do <laughs> podcasting. And so I heard that noise and I think I reached out to Mossy. I'm like, Hey, did you hear this? He's like, yeah, I heard it, but it wasn't, it wasn't outrageous. Like uh, I, I figured clean feed would, would help clean it up in the recordings. And so I told him that I use, ended up using the local recording. Well, then I was on a Zoom call, and I was getting the same clicking sound. Uh, people didn't mention it in the call, but it was a Zoom call that was live streamed to YouTube. And I'm like, well, this is me- this is getting on my nerves. So Demasi and I did some testing earlier today. And- is that the unboxing video? Yeah. yeah. Wow, okay, yeah. we should plug. It was Michael Doys of... What is Michael Doys of? Okay, yeah, good deal. Michael Doys of iAccessibility's uh, unboxing of his iPhone 13 Pro. Thank you. I was about to say 12, and I knew that was wrong. Again, yeah, I I, I heard that coming. (laughs) So, yeah, we we did the unboxing of Michael's iPhone 13 Pro uh, recorded live Friday, uh, yesterday as of the time of recording of this. And we'll have a link to it at yourownpay.com slash dm79. However, I went back and listened to that, and you can hear it now that I mention it. Um, if you go to that live stream, and you'll hear these random little clicks going on. So the two things I did, and I didn't realize that I did both of these until I was explaining it to Demasi, to try to troubleshoot it. Well, earlier today, we started by enabling the Eero Labs feature to prioritize network traffic to VOIP and gaming software. I'll have the exact wording in the show notes. And that seemed to, I think, have reduced it a little bit, but I it did not get rid of it. I mean, it. It kind of did, but not fully. So then I was doing dishes, like I always do, story of my life. And I was thinking, hey, what if it's this Shari node that I put upstairs? Because it started happening roughly around the same time that I got that. Uh, because I got that right before we recorded DM78, like three days beforehand. I noticed it on DM78, and it's been plugged in and running since DM78. So that would explain all the issues I've been having. And so I went and I unplugged it. Well, I also reduced my audio volume to 10 dB. Now, my audio was at 20 dB prior to the Sherry node, so I don't think that that will be posing an issue. Uh, but I realized that I tried two troubleshooting steps at the same time. So if it does, it's also not the Sherry note is not necessary to problem either. Unless just the proximity of that particular antenna is creating problems for you. Cause I've picked up maybe two clicks, not even right there together though. Very spaced out ah, today. Yes. Okay. Okay. So yeah, it's not that cause that's completely unplugged from the wall. So Packet loss. That's our answer. <laughs> yep. So the next troubleshooting step, I would say, would be trying to go into the Aero settings. And at least for the time that you're going to be either testing or when you do AMI on Monday, um, make your device the priority device for Internet traffic. So whatever else happens to be going on on the network, it prior prioritizes your packets first and see if that relieves the problem yeah i'm gonna have to see if that's doable because i also demasi and i had a uh, chicken before the egg conversation so if you plug in your laptop to ethernet into a mesh wi-fi 
satellite <laughs> are you actually hardwired to your internet yeah somebody if you got any feedback on that uh we really got to set up an email address uh, oh. or, or form or something but if anybody has any feedback on your opinions on that because i don't I, that sounds like one of those 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 is one of those very uh what's the word i'm looking for polarizing conversations mm-hmm. uh but if you have some feedback or some thoughts on whether or not hard wiring connecting directly to a mesh point that is not itself hardwired to the modem are you really hardwired uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know or, get at us on twitter the show is uh dm the, the dm, DM series. series yep uh yep. He's at Payone. I'm at Demasi, as you will hear again at the end of the show. Yeah, let us know your thoughts about that, because it was an interesting point that I have also thought about myself. I happen to be in a situation where my computer is connected directly to. Well, actually, it's not directed directly. Ah, oh, geez, man, that came out all backwards. Actually, it's not connected directly to the point because I have a a uh, Ethernet. A, a dumb ethernet switch nah. in between it, but I am connected directly, you know, indirectly to the device that is connected to the modem. So in practice, I've never got a chance to actually answer this question. So you're, you're the first person I know of is doing it. It's like, it's <laughs> interesting. You know, are you really hardwired? Cause you're plugged into the arrow. Yes. But the arrow's not plugged into right. anything but the wall. Right. Yeah. This is doing Wi-Fi backhaul to connect to the main, uh, point. So, yeah. Or, or is one of our Eero routers going out and now Mallory needs to spend more money to buy new Eero? Oh, man, you should still be up on a warranty if that's the case. I know, I know. I got to figure, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll be doing some testing. Maybe, here's the thing, I can call Eero and ask them if they have any ideas, too. Ah, there is an... I totally forgot about that. Mm, well, look, man, how, how often is it that you can just call a company that made a device that you bought yeah. to put in your house? Like, that's very, not really a normal very thing. Very not often at all. Yeah, that that is a, uh, you know, I've kind of come around on the whole mesh thing a little bit more. Uh, having to Google home here first off, but then realizing, like, how much having mesh provides in general uh, mm. And I still feel Eero is probably top of the heap as far as overall experience from everything I've heard yeah. about them uh, from different people. It's a pretty good experience for the most part. And the fact you can call people, you yeah, know, yeah. And, like actually get some help. And they can remotely look at my network instead of me having to to share settings with them and tell them this is what my phone says. Yeah, on the or phone screenshot the it. Or, yeah, yeah, or yeah. try to screenshot it and all of that. Yeah. They're a pretty nice service. Yeah, we know they're owned by Amazon. Yeah. I have other Amazon shit in my house, too. Maybe that's why I'm having internet issues. I have other <laughs> Amazon shit in my house. <laughs> oh, man. Now you're going to start the whole... Insert sarcasm sound effect there. Oh. <laughs> uh, so you're going to start the whole... the whole. Uh, yeah, you're going to get a lot of feedback on that one. It's going to be... Uh, I hope it's, so. It's probably because your, your Echo device is doing that whole sidewalk thing that Amazon oh, is doing, and they're yeah. stealing your bandwidth. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's very very minimal but actually is it minimal or did i read it, that they're taking no, it's extremely bit? it's this no nah, it's extremely minimal it's like 500 kilobits of data a month or something like that in the grand scheme of thing even if it was a couple megabits or or whatnot it it's not a lot i told demasi windows 11 told me and that's i'm not going down that path uh, Windows 11 could be the issue too. Just, just throwing that out there. I should, I don't have another device to try. Well, the thing is though, the reason I think is more internet related is because you're not getting the problem when you record locally. You're not getting that out of local recordings. You're not getting it when you clearly heard it in a recording done through clean feed, but you did not hear it in your local recording, backup recording that you did. So that's the thing that makes me think it has to be internet related. Yeah. Yeah. So. We will wrap up our conversation about my mysterious audio issues and mention that some amazing, for some people, things have happened recently. And that is iPhone 13s are out. And my enthusiasm is 
uh forced i guess is the best way to say it i was not impressed with the iphone event that we mentioned on our last show coming up mainly because we didn't get USB-C. granted i didn't think we actually would but man i would have i would have dropped i would have did what i had to do to buy a new phone if you man USB-C i would have yeah i would have made some but, moves to try yeah. to get a, a 13 if they would have yeah. added USB-C. Apple, I think you would have sold a lot more phones than what you're going to sell. A lot you would have put more 30, uh, but I don't know. Put Maybe that's why they didn't do it this year, though, because, you know, logistics are still mm-hmm. slightly screwed up, even for Apple. <sighs> Maybe that's a conversation we should have about logistics. But iPhone 13 came out uh, super underwhelming for me. I, I did mention Michael, who got a iPhone 13. I think he's the only one that I personally know right now that got a new iPhone but with iPhone 13 came iOS 15, and that's interesting to think about. I wonder if ever iPhone and iOS will match up. Nope. Are you sure? Because they skip nine. They could skip 14 and 15 and go to 16 next year. Mm. Nope. Yeah, yeah, I agree. But anyways, iOS 15 came out. It's official. Out. Uh, I've been using it since June. demossi has been using it since August, roughly late july yeah late july early august something like that and i'm liking it honestly um the biggest feature go ahead i was gonna say the timeline measurement for when i started using it is i got on the beta on the release of the current way that safari on the iphone looks so i Mm. never saw safari before it looks the way that it looks right now on the iphone oh man my head hurts thinking about it so at first, I absolutely hated the new Safari. And what we're talking about is Apple has moved the address bar to the bottom of the screen on Safari. And now it is in in a little area that has your back forward uh, bookmarks share and tabs, I think. Did I do that right off the top of my head? Anyways. Something like that. Back, yeah. no, back forward share bookmarks tabs. I, I don't there know. Yeah, yeah. Something like Anyways, that. Anyways, that bar. It's down by that bar now. And then uh, above that is the directly above that is a button on the left that I think says site options, if I remember right. Then there's the address bar, then the reload button. And I like it because your thumb kind of just falls right onto the address bar. You double tap and you can enter your text. In the past, you had to do, going back to the iPhone shimmy, uh, and get the phone down so you could reach the top of the screen on some of these bigger phones and double tap and then start entering your text. Prior to the setup that iOS 15 has, there wasn't that back forward share, that, that bar of five buttons across the bottom. That was not on the bottom of Safari. You had to hit the more buttons. Uh, the first iteration, you had to hit the more button to get to. The oh, button. prior to them doing what yep. they've done. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> gotcha. So prior to Demasi jumping on, because it's been there since Demasi was on the beta, uh, that was not there. So the address bar was where it is now, but you could still read some of the text under the address under bar the, that's on yeah. the website that you were on. So it looked to a voiceover user, like, and I think cited too, like it was literally just hovering there, ho- hovering there right there in the middle of, you know. That, that is space. what it was doing. Is it was kind of hovering over the page versus being, mm-hmm. you know, attached to anything because there was nothing for it to be attached to at that point. Yeah. So I was I, having nightmares about web development. I got to tell you, man, I was not looking forward to it. <laughs> Yeah, because that would have broke the whole web. But now it's working, and now that they fixed it. So first, I'm like, I don't like this. If you want to, you can go and change the address bar to be at the top if you'd prefer. You can do that in site options, I believe, is one place I found it. And in the Safari set, uh, Safari settings screen, you can go in there and move that address bar back up to the top. But for me, I think once you get familiar with it down there, it, it, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I, I encourage anybody that updates to give it a couple of weeks before you just revert back to the default setting uh, or the old setting of having the address bar at the top because you will get used to it. Like it was a little disconcerting and, and I'm not going to lie, like the first week I was on it, I not every time, but a lot of times I would be going to the top of my phone doing the whole shimmy thing so I could uh, hit the address bar and then like, oh, yeah, no, it's now here. <laughs> uh, and now like i really honestly 
it's not going to take very long before I forget that there it used to be at the top. Like that's that's how comfortable it is for me. So I urge anybody to at least give it a couple of weeks before you just give up on it and go back to the default or the old way of having the address bar at the top because it is really much more useful. I will come back with some follow up on this next episode. But when Mallory did the update, she really didn't play with my beta phone, but she did the update. And uh, I, I, her first response was, what the hell did they do to my Safari? <laughs> so Teal did the update. She hasn't said anything about it yet. Huh. So I'm assuming she has not been in Safari. <laughs> Which isn't really honestly surprising. Right, right, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I will, I will also follow up. <laughs> <laughs> or I would try to remember. I probably would tell Mike for sure. I hopefully will remember to put it in the show uh, in the future as to what her reaction was. Yeah. So other things in iOS 15 include notification summary. Thoughts on that? I've turned that shit off. <laughs> Why? Uh, because they weren't working. Like they, they don't work in a way that is they don't work in the way that they seem to should work, I guess. Either it's not the way I expect them to work or there's still something slightly broken there for voiceover users, but I just, I, it just wasn't working for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I did not actually turn it off until after the release of iOS 15. And I was like, oh, oh okay, well, that's how it's going to work. So I'm just going to turn them off. Uh, it was the, the idea for people listening behind, uh, notification summaries is that you can say, you know, you now have the ability to set certain notifications to only show up in a summary. You can schedule your summaries, you know, as much as you want. So I had to set up one for first thing in the morning or you know, I'll say maybe an hour or so after I, I, after I should have been out of bed. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then one that would show up at like 9 p.m. my time at night. Uh, and I had a lot of stuff going there like, uh, you know, Twitter notifications and uh, just, just, just lots of things where like, I would like to see these notifications at some point, but they don't need to interrupt me. Uh, I did like that capability because it allowed me to keep certain notifications on without having to do a lot of tweaking to say, oh, they can show up in notification center, but not on the lock screen, not on, not as banners and all of that, which is what I've had to revert back to doing. But the problem was you would tap on the summary. Sometimes it would expand. Sometimes it wouldn't. Mm-hmm. Uh, dismissing it didn't always work the way that it was supposed to. Uh, so I just turned them off. I'm like, man, it's more annoying than it is anything. So I have kept them on. I don't know if I'm going to turn them off, but I have kept them on just because was it an easy process to turn them off? Is it just a toggle? Yeah, it's just a toggle. You just turn it off and then you don't even have to, because I thought I was going to have to go like delete the, the, uh, summaries that i had set up like the time the scheduling of them uh but no it's just a toggle at the top of that screen and notifications uh summaries just turn it off and then it's off which means if you turn it off and you're like oh you know actually i really do want it back you can just turn (laughs) it back on and your schedule should still be intact yeah yeah we we don't know because we haven't turned them off and then back on but theoretically they should still be intact now uh so that's that feature have you played with focus modes at all so i have played with focus modes a little bit uh i have one setup that is called recording funnily enough i did not turn it on uh you could time because i have my huh you could time it i don't know if you could put it every other saturday but you could put it saturdays at 10 p.m uh, I don't, automatically I don't, enable. Yeah, I just think about that. Uh, but yeah, I do like focus modes. I do need to spend some time. Like I, I've been sort of like thinking out what type of focus modes I need. Like, what do I actually need to do? Because I mean, essentially, I could use my recording focus mode or or what I have right now set up as my work focus mode for anything. Because basically, it just lets certain people. Uh, a, a very limited number of people can call me and, and break through just on their first call like they'll get through. Uh, there's a wider group of people that can text me uh, and get through automatically. And then most notifications outside of care, weather, 
uh, Fantastic Cow, and there's probably one or two more apps that I'm not remembering right now can deliver notifications and everything else is off. So like, I don't really know what I need at the moment beyond that other than maybe triggering some shortcuts uh, or something like that. But I haven't, I haven't really played around with that at all. Cause remember shortcuts was, you know, slightly screwy yeah. for a second. Uh, so that, that didn't entice me to really mess with that particular uh, function of it. Uh, focus modes to summarize what they are is just think of it as an expansion of think of it as an expansion of do not disturb. So much more controls. Uh, so again, I have a work focus mode where like, I think Tia may be the only person that can call me. Uh, but a lot more people can text me, including Mike. Uh, but. And then, you know, that handful of applications can send me a notification. Well, that's one focus mode. Do not disturb mode still works the same way. Just plain old do not disturb works. And I can tweak other options and settings. Some other features that come along that I have not played with is uh, the ability to hide certain home screens. So if you lay your home screens out in such a way that there are specific apps you want to have access to in a focus mode, though, that'll be the only thing you see. Um what else? I think you trigger shortcuts when you open a focus mode or have a shortcut trigger a focus mode. I can't remember which one it is or if it's both of those. Yeah, I'm not sure. I haven't looked at the shortcut support for focus mode. Um, and I, and they are also coming to Mac OS Monterey at some point later this year. Uh, so that might be nice. I have also another thing that I have noticed are timely notifications. Have you played with that at all yet? Timely notifications? Yeah, so Todoist, for example, says this is a timely notification. Do you want to keep enabling them? I think that's what they're called. Uh, uh, yeah, I think it's high. Is it high priority? Uh, it's something like that. Yeah. Time yeah. sensitive. That's time what sensitive. Time there sensitive. we go. Yes. Yes. Time sensitive notifications. And I think those can be altered on you know if if an app is sending me a time sensitive notification in a focus mode even if it's not on the list it might be something you can enable demasi summarized it though super easily it is do not disturb on steroids like (laughs) you can do a lot with it uh yeah you do have the ability with a focus mode to say allow any app to send through time sensitive notifications uh um, i think we're probably some weeks out from seeing a lot of that being taken advantage of by developers like where you can actually tweak so you can say to say to do is like i want these types of notifications to be consider time sensitive and then you know my let's say a task that is due today should be a time sensitive type of notification but you know a report on my karma points like "Mm, yeah whatever man not so important right right yeah uh so there's that uh icloud plus (laughs) tia did come ask me about that because she got an email she's like uh what is icloud icloud plus and why do i have it now and how much is it oh (laughs) <laughs> uh, and I said, so iCloud Plus is the same thing that we already had. They just threw a plus on it. Uh, so for us, that meant because we're on paying for Apple Premier One, we one are now Apple too. One Premier, whatever it is, yeah. the thirty dollars a month, twenty nine ninety five US. Yep. So I'm paying for that. Uh, so for us, it didn't really change anything. Is is literally what I told her, which is like it's just what we already had with iCloud with the storage and all of that stuff. They Apple just threw a plus on it because you know why not? They got pluses on everything else. Uh, but essentially, all it seems to be to me is, and, and maybe I, I haven't really looked at it because I'm like I'm already paying for all the stuff, so there's no point for me to try to dissect it. I think maybe iCloud Plus itself starts with a tier of iCloud storage, perhaps. Uh, and then because because my, you know, our iCloud storage is included in Apple One, we won't necessarily see the breakout, but it looks like it's just iCloud storage is what they're talking about. So uh, some other features that come along with that besides them just throwing a plus on it, though, uh, private relay, I think, is a part of this to some extent. Uh, the hide my email functionality where you can just automatically generate a random email address anywhere uh, that is requesting an email, uh, I believe is a part of this as well. And iCloud branded or custom domains for iCloud email, uh, I believe is also a part of this. 
Uh, yes, only for family. So you cannot set up, you know, I mean, I guess you could set up your business email if you, if it was just you, but, uh, I'm going to say this. I would strongly advise against doing that for a business. Uh, I would honestly at this point until we see how it shakes out, I would strongly advise anybody putting a, a, um, important domain, setting that up with iCloud email, uh, just because I think one, it's a little weird the way they set it up. And two, we all know how Apple tends to have some rough patches with web services. Uh, so I would not put any, any important email domain setting that up. I will at some point set it up. So I'll talk about it on the show at a future point with a domain that I don't care if I get email there. Cause I probably don't. Uh, the weird thing to me though, is like in order for you to set up, um, custom domain email for iCloud, you have to already have had the email, the domain set up for email before you want to switch it over to iCloud. Like that to me seems strange. It's like, oh, because I was thinking in my mind when they announced this is like, oh, there's going to be a lot more people trying to go register domains now uh, because they're going to want their family domain, especially with the dot family extension and some other cool extensions that you may want for your family. Just, just, you know, low cost doesn't cost you a ton of money a year, but now you got your own branded email inside of some email that you already have for free. Anyway, you're just paying for the domain. Now like, Oh, that's cool. Uh, it's like, Oh no, you have to actually have email set up at this domain to get an email before you can do it. Right. And I'm like, that makes absolutely no sense to me. Google doesn't require me to get an email out of domain before I can add it to workspace. Like just saying, man, but this is a family product, not a business product. So, I mean, I don't know what to say about it, but that's also mm-hmm. a reason that I, I'm suggesting like if you have a domain for your family email or something like that, or if you're a single member company and you have your domain email as you should for your company, I would not move my company email to iCloud. Um, mm. iCloud has its own unique email challenges anyways so (laughs) there's other issues with iCloud email besides just you know the 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 other stuff yeah I I I stopped relying on my iCloud me.com email address a long time ago yeah so that primarily is iCloud plus uh there's something to do with secure video cameras too that oh yeah are in the Uh, app yeah, I forget about that because one, there's not a ton of cameras in, in that ecosystem in the first place. Uh, HomeKit secure video. Interesting concept. I wish there was more sort of like HomeKit in general, but I guess we're going to have to wait on matter mm-hmm. to get out the door before we really see any positive movement and, in the HomeKit space. And then we'll start seeing the doesn't matter jokes. Hmm. Yeah. I wonder who's going to be the first one to do it in a presentation. So this new camera or doorbell or whatever. Does you know, matter. It, no, 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 no. It works with, you know what? It doesn't, you, you know, you can use it with your home assistant. Which home assistant? It doesn't matter which home assistant. <laughs> it works with all of them. This integrates with Apple HomeKit. This integrates with Amazon's uh, A-Lady. Is you know, works with Google's assistant. It so don't matter. It Just don't get it matter connected. who you got. Just so talk to it. If you need Demasi for your marketing videos, reach out. <laughs> no, uh, man. You know who the perfect person to do that do that joke is? Who? The Rock. Oh. <laughs> uh, oh, that was bad. True, but bad. It's <laughs> <laughs> bad. You know, I, I can see him on commercials now. Yeah. Man. It wouldn't be the first time he's done commercials either. Like, no, it wouldn't, man. And you haven't seen him in a while. Anyways. I ain't seen Dwayne Johnson in a while. I wonder what I was just thinking about that. Like, man, we yeah. ain't seen him since, what, Scorpion 2 or something? Nope, nope, nope. He was in that Apple video a few years ago. Oh. Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember the Apple video with Siri, where yeah. Siri was supposed to be so great, and we all got the updates that year. And was like, and mm, Siri is like, yeah, work. the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate it, Siri. Shitty Siri. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think, is there anything else in iOS 15 super new? Um, You finally get the ability to move widgets around where you want to on iPad OS. Uh, hmm. That's a new feature for iPad users. Uh, there are new functionalities, which I have not looked at at all, so I won't even attempt to talk about them with uh, multitasking on iPad, uh, which 
could potentially, I, I would assume, make. I guess I won't talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Not the actual, he's not going to talk about the actual implementation and usage of them because he hasn't used them, but nope. he has some thoughts on it. I do have some thoughts on it. So I do think the new way that multitasking is uh, possible in iPad OS 15 will probably make it easier for, if if you're like me and have ever tried to deal with uh, multitasking, one of the most frustrating things in multitasking on the iPad is, oh, my kids got this app open and I need to put this app on the side. Drove me fucking nuts doing virtual <laughs> learning last year. Okay, let me go get this. Oh, damn, that app is not on the dock. How do I get it over here? I guess I got to close this app, then move this app to the dock, then go back and open this app. And then, oh, damn it. You know what? Baby, hold on. Here, you can use this phone to go on the side of your iPad. This is driving me crazy. Uh, uh, so apparently with, with the new setup, uh, it, it is easier to find. Oh, that's another thing should drive me crazy too. trying to get this screen split correctly because she didn't uh-huh. want it or didn't need it 50 50 like what she needed was the application they were supposed to be doing their work in bigger and then the video for she could see her teacher smaller, smaller right it used to be super difficult to get that working sometimes too uh but apparently there's new new methods for doing that uh apparently also with uh multitasking in ipad os 15 you don't have to do the whole it has to be in your dock dilly thing you can huh bring up the half screen and go grab an app from your home screen and just drag it over and make it, you know, so that, that sounds interesting. I have not upgraded the kids iPads at all because uh, I'm going to need to wipe them before I do anything. They're starting to run out of storage. <laughs> That'll be the true test is do the kids have any problems with using the new setup? Oh man, they ain't going to care. They ain't gonna nope. be watching it'll, whatever it'll it be is. It'll be the same plus. thing for them. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Stay going. You know that happen. Yep. Yep. Uh, I, their apps will be in different places because you wiped it. Yeah, yeah. Man, these games are huge. Yeah, they are. Fucking games like three, four gigs. Like, why does the game Whoa. have to be three or four Whoa. gigs? Like, PlayStation games are like 60, 70 gigs. I didn't realize that iPad games were that big. Not that yeah. big, but three And these are games. arcade games by... You know, for for most choice, so like it's not any in out purchases or anything like that because they're coming from the Apple Arcade, but they are huge. Uh, but I can't think of anything else new. I'm pretty sure there's something that we're possibly missing. Oh, when do we get? Do we have the Facebook? Not Facebook. Oh, mm-hmm. damn! Mm-hmm. Too much research for other people today. Uh, yes. Do we have the FaceTime? share link thing yes. yeah or is that the dig oh we do okay so we have that so we don't have share can... play yet which is what's yeah, being nobody. delayed yeah, oh nobody about oh and the shared links so when i share a link with demasi and he opens Safari, oh. and oh. there has like that's probably one of the more used features that i'm using that i totally forgot about yeah i forgot about those so the backup FaceTime now, you can share a link with people on a link. You can actually just generate a link for, for a FaceTime call. So that means, obviously, you can send it to people who are on Android or Windows. Uh, and I would say Linux as well, because, I mean, you can open up, you just open it up in a web browser if you're not on, on an Apple device. Uh, so uh, that's handy, I guess, for what it's worth, even though everybody is using Zoom today. So I don't know why. It Apple, matters, you, but you, you missed the boat on that one. Man, you would have like that last so year. Late. Yeah. <sighs> Probably wouldn't have, you know, they would have needed it actually a year before that, to be right. honest, because it would have needed to rest with people that, oh, I can use FaceTime now. And a lot of more people would have been using FaceTime because, you know, we Apple people do have a tendency to kind of, you know, nudge people into using a thing that we want to use. Mm. So politely put. Uh, <laughs> you have to generate the link from a iPhone or iPad right now. Oh yeah, yeah, iPhone or iPad because it's not on the back yet. Yeah. Uh, so that's there. But yeah, the share a links thing. So I'm gonna I'm gonna spell this out with a scenario because this is what happens <laughs> with me and Mike. Michael sends me a link to something. And I open up messages and I see that Mike sent me this link. I'm like, I can't look at that right now. So I'll come back to it. Right. Uh, 
And then me and Mike, you know, have more conversation and a few days pass and, you know, because I was washing dishes or cooking something or cutting grass or whatever or working and I forget about the link. And then eventually the link gets buried. And if you know anything, Mm. if you've ever tried it, you know, mail messages search uh, sucks yes, uh, Yes, horribly. So I'm never going to find this link. Right. And sometimes I reach out to Mike like, Mike, what was the link that you sent me to this thing? And he's like, uh, I don't know. And you know why he doesn't know? It's because it was like two months ago when he sent it. Uh, <laughs> so it happens all the time. All the time. And I was at iOS 15 now. Mike shares a link with me. I don't click on it instantly. But when I go to Safari and I tap my address bar that's at the bottom, nice and handy. If I explore my screen for suggestions there, I am going to see links that have been shared with me from people through messages. These will also show up from other applications uh, in future. I'm not sure how how well this is rolled out to other applications at this point because I don't. But messages well, works. Yeah, messages works. I'm, I'm a typical Apple user, so I refuse to use any other mm-hmm. messaging service uh, except Signal. You can find me on Signal or Threema, uh, but I won't do Facebook Messenger. Uh, Telegram, every time I get in the mood, I'm like, I'm really going to get into this Telegram thing. Something goofy happens with their security somewhere. Uh, and I think those are the only two services, WhatsApp and, and, and Telegram, that I know a lot of people are on that I just refuse to use. Uh, if I were going to pick one, it would probably be Telegram, I guess. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, but it, you will start seeing links surface up uh, there. You also see photos that people share with you when messages show up as things that you can save to your photo library. If you're browsing photos, uh, there are going to be some other places you will see stuff. Apple Music up. does work. If someone shares a playlist or a song or a artist with you, it'll be in the shared with you tab in Apple Music. too. Ah, okay. Yeah. Nobody shares music with me. I don't share <laughs> music with anybody because I don't think they want to hear what I hear and I don't probably right. don't want to hear what they're hearing. Yeah. Yeah. Nicholas shared music with me. That's literally the only reason I know it. <laughs> ah, well, see, that's different. Now, when my yeah. kids get to that point where they want to share music with me, then that'll be a whole different thing. But they'll probably be the only ones, too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and what I've also noticed is that I clicked a link in an email from Michael and opened it up in Safari. And at the very top of the Safari screen, you know, where that, where that pesky address bar used to be, uh, there's a little banner above the website. So before you get to the web content, it says, uh, shared by Michael Babcock or something like that. I don't remember the exact wording. And there's a dismiss button so you can make it go away. Uh, but it just reminds me, which is handy because I did open a page one day and I was like, oh, why okay. am I here? I know how I got here, but I can see myself in that scenario if I open up Safari and forgot where I was mm-hmm. or some page that I had, a tab that was open surfaces back up to the top. And I'm like, why am I here? And I can <laughs> look at the top and be like, oh, so and so sent me this. Yep. Yeah. So that's that's a cool handy little feature that I think will end up getting used a lot more by me than what it is right now. But all around, iOS 15 seems to be a fairly stable experience. Yeah, it's pretty decent. I can see uh I mean see there there are some edges that still need to be rubbed off but it it is overall fine uh also for everybody you can turn off that share with me feature if you don't like it so they're not forcing it upon you it's just on by default so you can turn it off uh if it gets annoying i don't think they give you the ability to turn it off granularly but i haven't actually tried to turn it off so i'll take a look and let you guys know but for sure you can turn it off globally maybe nice if you could turn it off just for photos but i don't know uh, but yeah, iOS 15 is nice overall. I don't have any complaints. WatchOS is pretty stable. I really don't know anything. The messages app on WatchOS is so annoying. I was about to say, I don't know what's new in WatchOS, but yeah, this messages app sucks. Yes, but but after seeing the Watch 7, I know why. Well, I partially know why it's this shitty. Because you got to have room to put that keyboard. Yeah, so the new watches were also announced at the event. They can yeah. fit the keyboard on the screen. I don't see anybody really doing that. No. Uh, and no. It's just annoying. So messages for everybody once you upgrade to watch OS 8. Yes. 
Once you upgrade to watchOS 8, your Messages app on your watch is going to look very much like the Messages app on your phone does. So uh, just keep that in mind when you're reading messages. You do have to tap into the edit field before you can get the dictation button to show up so that you can dictate a message like you normally would do from your watch. Yes. So we talked a couple weeks ago about a cross-platform lifestyle and I can tell you that I have not buried myself in that cr- cross-platform lifestyle as much as I thought I was going to. I blame the slight delay from FedEx on my... No, that's that's a horrible excuse. But I have not buried myself in, in that cross-platform as much as I thought I was. How has your experience with iOS and Android been? Because my Android phone has been sitting on the table. I pick it up and play with it when I'm upstairs and you know look stuff up. The other day I grabbed it, went downstairs and looked some stuff up on it and uh, played Dice World or something. I don't remember what I played on it and used it that way. But that's primarily how much I've been using it. I keep picking up the Windows phone or the Windows phone. (laughs) Wow. I got a Windows application error on my computer, which randomly pops up every once in a while. That's what threw me off. So, uh. I've been mainly playing with the iPhone, and yeah, that's been my experience. I gotta be honest, at this point, my Pixel is mostly an audible hmm. book playing device. Hmm. Uh, hmm. Hmm. I don't know. I, I do have my SIM card in it. It has my business number attached to it, so I have used it to make uh, business phone calls uh, and do a little bit of messaging, so that, that's that been fine. I've done some web browsing. I'm still annoyed, and I turned off all the vibration, haptic feedback yep. stuff with talk Vibration back. and uh, sounds get turned off for me. Uh, but the browsing experience on the web still isn't great, and there's still a lot of the apps in Android that are basically web view, so that, that makes the experience more frustrating. And there's ever so often that little bit of delay when you're trying to navigate, uh, whether it's flicking or explore by touch where you just don't get any feedback. And it, it I, I find it frustrating for productivity purposes. Yes. Uh, I want to like it, though. I do want to like it because there's a lot of features there that I do actually like. It's just the experience of using it. I just like the form factor of the phone. Like when I look at it compared to my iPhone, it's like my iPhone's like double the thickness. Maybe not quite exactly, but it's, it's substantial. <laughs> and then you got the iPhone this does feel pixel. more substantial, and this 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 pixel yeah. feels like it's you know plastic. Uh, yep, 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 yeah. But it, it is super light, uh, super light. Yeah, that is my experience with Android. I I think Android could make it there like to an equivalency maybe eventually but i also feel like i've been saying this for years and that's the disappointing part so we we have said this a couple of times I, I i have agreed with this statement even before i was you know using or testing android devices at all or wasn't actively testing them but the problem is like I don't know how they get there. Like it feels like they're they're almost there. Like we're 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 almost there. I mean, they've got better gestures now. We got two finger. Wait, is that in eleven? Yeah, oh, that's okay. in eleven. So we got two finger double tap now for for play, pause, answering calls. You know, basic things like that that we've been used to on iOS for a while. It, it's really more so, I think, the lag and the experience browsing the web that is that that are the biggest issues in the way that certain gestures that should work on android don't necessarily work when you're using talkback uh like i have the worst time trying to dismiss like you should be able to swipe across a message in, in, in google mail uh gmail app to you know archive it or whatever mm. it never works it always gets the message either one above or one below the one that i was actually trying to mm. you know swipe away or whatever like little little things like that are i think what's holding it back but what's sad to me about it is the fact that i look at i mean i don't know personally but from talking to you and and, and listening to other people's thoughts on narrator on windows 
like the progress that narrator has made from when it was first introduced in what was it windows vista maybe xp had uh, narrator oh did it yep ah i never touched it windows u alt n <laughs> can you can you tell that key the, the that set of keystrokes is kind of yeah, ingrained into yeah. my mind now yeah yeah <laughs> you, you really had to use that uh yep to get wow. my other screen readers on windows not quite so much anymore now you can actually use narrator yeah that's the thing is like i, I hear a lot of people say that narrator is great i mean for some people i think it up under you know the right circumstances they could use narrator full time and not have any problems or any concerns is, is my understanding of where we are today. And, you know, I say up under the right circumstances, eh, probably maybe not the best option for say Reaper at this point, but right. That's, that's still Absolutely, growth. That's that, the ironic thing is in Reaper it works just fine because, because of the Osara interface for Reaper, uh, ah. it's not reliant on a specific screen reader. Now you don't have, like when you up and down arrow, you will hear like blank track one, blank track two, but it definitely can be done. And interestingly enough, narrator, I use NVDA when I'm in Reaper, but narrator gives just as much responsiveness as NVDA does in Reaper. But JAWS still has, at least for me, it could very well be a weird thing on my end, but it has that weird lag that I've always complained about. So, but yeah. I think where you might run into some, some issues with narrator, like I would not use narrator with Zendesk. Um, that just to me, ah, good example. Yeah. I, I don't think it would work very well. I have not tried it, but I don't think it would work very well. Uh, but at the same time, I think we have a, a, a better foundation to say, well, the things that aren't, necessarily great with narrator at this point or where it's not the best tool for the job right now you know it is much more likely that that could improve more so than i think we can continue to have that same confidence and talk back in android because we're not seeing that there's like a disconnection and i'm not sure what it is like is is our people i i am really curious to use a samsung phone at this point to see is that experience as different as it used to be between using uh using a using talk back on any android device and the few devices that i looked at that uh had their s talk back uh and even with just regular talk back on on samsung i do remember i mean i carried an android phone full time for over two years mm -hmm. and i don't remember being as frustrated with it then as i find myself being frustrated today if that makes sense the frustration back then for me was more so there's a lot of apps with unlabeled buttons was more my frustration. Whereas now it's like the, the, the navigation experience is not as butter smooth. Like the big contrast is, you know, I just flick through the apps that are on a home screen on the Android phone, put it down, pick up the iPhone, unlock it, flick through those apps. And it's like, geez, like there this, is a, this, this you, gap should not be there. Yeah. I had both the iPhone and the Android in my hand. I don't remember who I was on. I think I was on someone with, on Discord with someone. And I was just flicking through, and you could tell the the lag time in the it pixel over the iPhone. Now, Demasi, when you were using that Samsung device, had you used an iPhone prior to that? Yes. Okay. Okay. Because I was going to say so, it could have been just your introduction to smartphone is why you didn't have the frustration, but you had used an iPhone. Yep, I went from an iPhone 4 to uh, a Galaxy S3. Uh -huh. uh, and I used that Galaxy S3 for a while. And then I went to, I think the next phone I got was the iPhone 5S. So okay. uh, I got the Galaxy S3 when it was released, if somebody wants to look that up. Uh, and then I got the 5S the May after it was announced. So hmm. I had that phone for a while. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there, I wonder if that's a problem though. Like, is it could that be the experience that we're both dealing with? Because we both have the same uh, Pixel Five device. Uh, is it just that, like, because I I've been hearing people sort of offhandedly say in different places, mostly all about Android, that this has been an off couple of years for the Pixel devices. Like, is it a hardware issue? But it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. I don't have an answer for you because. 
my experience with Android devices have all been Google branded devices, the Nexus, the Pixels, and I think that's that's all the Android that's devices I've used. So yeah. I don't know. That is a very good question. And maybe I should pick another one up just to try it out. I will say there is a... So I don't know if it's still being actively developed. I suspect it is, but I can't confirm it or not. There is the commentary screen reader, which is made by a guy or a group. I don't know if it's one or multiple people out of China. It is a screen reader. I have played with it. Not on the next or Nexus, not on the Pixel 5, but on the Pixel 3 XL. I played with it on that. And that screen reader experience was a lot more snappy than what you get with TalkBack. It, it seemed to respond a lot faster. Now you have the gotchas of it is, and, and I don't say this to offend any Chinese person listening, but it is a Chinese screen reader where all the documentation is in Chinese that I don't understand. So I don't know what, if anything, it's sending back home or, or anything like that. And that's the primary reason why I don't use it as my full-time screen reader. But it tells me that the possibility for a decent screen reader on Android is there. It just doesn't seem to be you know, taken. Eloquent seems to be a little bit more responsive than the default TTS now. Yeah, yeah. Thinking about it, that 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 did make that's the reason I I've have consistently uh, been reinstalling it <laughs> whenever <laughs> I'm working on Android too, is because it's like it is it, not great. It doesn't solve all your problems, but it does make it just a little bit better. Yeah. Uh, I honestly don't really care about the voice as much as like, oh, that's cool, you know, to have the eloquence, you know, Jaws voice on your phone. But right. like, I don't really care so much about that. It's just that little bit better er than the default Google TTS is. Yeah. And I'm just gonna flash my phone and put some some super secure put, put uh cyanogen or uh what was that one that you messaged me? I could look I, at my shared with you in Safari <laughs> and it'll bring go. it up. But yeah. There you go. Yeah, I'm gonna put one of these super uh, that that may be an experiment that I do do at some point with this phone it's like try putting one of the super secure i will grab a link for people that are interested i think i had a list of it was like i think it was a list of like three or four mm, yeah options for secure android from you know basically i don't want to use google services all the way up to like hey this phone is completely the hell locked down and you ain't doing shit yeah probably <laughs> won't even have talk back on it <laughs> yeah that that that's just what i thought about too i was like <laughs> uh, so that right there looks like i might not even be able to put the open yeah. source version of talk back on here like i'm not sure that's a good idea yeah. Uh, but I may try just to see, you know, what the experience is like running a super lockdown version of the OS. Although, according to Twitter, like, I mean, you shouldn't trust any of this shit. Doesn't mm. matter. If you're on the internet, it's all over. Get rid of your Apple Watches. Get rid of your Apple Watch. <laughs> Man. Uh, so, Demasi, I'm going to wrap it up here by sharing my favorite app. I've been reading a lot of books. I'm about a quarter of the way through the one you told me to read. Uh, what do you think about it? I I see the relationships you made to <laughs> existing people at this in, 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 in this world we live in now. So, for those who are curious, we're reading Delta V. That's the name of it, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I just got done reading another book, so I had to make sure I had the right words in the title. Uh, but my app of choice is an app that I downloaded again recently to keep track of some of the books that I'm reading. And I went back and looked at some of the old books I had read that I kept in there. And I, I forgot that I had read some of those books. And yeah, so I am enjoying Goodreads. It is a Amazon owned property. I believe they own it now and it still has my content from 2008 in there. Uh, even though I added mm. a couple of books that I read in 2006, cause it, it let you add that information super accessible on iOS have not played with it on Android, 
One thing to be aware of on iOS is if you're rating a book, you can use your actions rotor to flick up and down to rate the book right there on the rating and then double tap to give it that rating. And if you need to change a bookshelf, you can use your actions rotor to uh, change the bookshelf as well. Uh, Pretty clean interface and a great way to keep track of the books you want to read, the books you're reading, or the books you have read. Oh, good pick. Good pick. I will take another look at Goodreads because I have, it's, it's accessibility used to be a little rougher, I know. Oh, yeah, no. Days, oh, but, check it out. But I, I definitely did not jump into it way back in 2008, though, before Amazon bought it. Yeah. The thing that annoys me about it, though, uh, is Amazon owns uh, Goodreads, mm-hmm. they own Audible, mm-hmm. and of course they you know, created the Kindle, right? Why? Why are all these things not more tightly integrated? So I thought... Or has that changed since I've used it? I thought I read a place, and I, I, I don't keep track of the status of my books, because with Goodreads, you can say, I'm on page 642 of 10,000. No, no, I can't. Like, I don't want to do that. No. But I believe now you can actually put what time marker in a book you are if it's an audio really? book. Yeah, but see, no, what I mean by more tightly integrated is like I should be able to push a button in the Audible app and say, you know, add this mm, mm. add this status to my good read or just have good reads track it like, oh, when I finish reading a book in Audible, just add it to my have read list. Ah, or whatever. Ah, that's a good point. Good point there. Send it to Goodreads as a feature request. Man, Nothing will happen. But. Oh, man. But no, Goodreads is a good pick. No, the way that I have used it in the past when I have used it is to add books that I wanted to read. Mm-hmm. I should probably look in there and see if there's anything I want to read. Mm-hmm. Uh, because for me, that's a better place than just adding stuff to my wish list in Audible, which I do do a lot. But then, you know, what if I find a book somewhere else and I may not remember that I wanted to read that book? Yeah. Uh And uh, so, yeah, and I will add stuff that I have read. I, I do re- really need to build that that kind of list up in there but no i'm not gonna re- like oh yeah i'm on page 17 like nah not so much i don't, I don't got time for that i want to just nope. read my book just want to read my book man. <laughs> I don't got time for that uh so i am going to pick a app that i have talked about i think i've talked about this app before hold on because i might change my mind where the hell is my phone one of these days, I should remind Demasi we're going to do this before we record. Because <laughs> I kind of cheated because I put Demasi on mute earlier in the episode. And I'm like, all right, what, what app am I going to do? And then I pulled my phone out. <laughs> so the funny thing is, uh, I, I thought about it earlier uh-huh. uh, before we got on because I was going to I was going to ask you about the book. Uh huh. Uh, that you're reading about Delta V. Yeah. Actually, that's going to be my recommendation. All right. Go read Delta V. Yeah. Yeah. There you uh, go. That works. Delta V is a book by Daniel Suarez. Uh, if you are familiar with his name at all, or you're not, a, a, you know, have not really read his work. I it, I think he's most famous for uh, the two part series he wrote, Demon and uh, Freedom, mm. TM. Which of the two first book his first two books that I read? Uh great stories in their own right, both of them. Read Demon first and then read Freedom. Do not do what I did and accidentally mix them up and read Freedom first. <laughs> like, wait, what? And you gotta go back and read Demon so you can figure out like what the hell how the hell do we get here? Yeah. Uh but Delta V is a very interesting story. It it's got a little bit of futuristic stuff going on in it. Uh not not too outrageous no. people ain't running around with ray guns or nothing it's like 2035 ish uh, 2033 yeah uh is, is when this book starts uh and it is in my mind at least it is it is very parallel to where i can so i can see us arriving at this point is at, at some point in the future it's basically about a guy a a rich guy well several rich guys who are trying to go to space uh mm-hmm. And we have some more space. Like, I think there's a space hotel there now that's on the moon or something like that. And a space uh, amusement park that, like, shoots people up 63 miles and then brings them back down. 
Yeah, so so there's a lot more, you know, venturing out into space for temporary stuff. But what they're looking at is the, you know, obviously, how do I make money in space, right? Mm. Like really make money. And so they're looking at mining asteroids. And, you know, there's one faction of people that say, you know, we're going to send some robots out there to do it. And there's this one nuts old guy who remind me who reminds me of a person uh, <laughs> that is like, I'm going to send the humans because humans can fix stuff if it breaks. They can work around issues that uh, robots cannot. Uh, so it gets very interesting. Uh, very interesting story. Mikey, what point are you at in the story? Uh, I can tell you that I'm about two and a half hours into it. Um, I, I don't remember exactly what happened right recently. Have they done the whole? Are they doing the the, the training they, for they are the in possible? The training. Ah, okay. So you they you you haven't gotten to the the, the ship? Uh, uh, no, yeah, no, no. Okay. Yep. Still going uh, through training. <laughs> good story. But your thoughts about it so far? Not bad. It, it's it's a good read. Keeps me engaged. Uh, that's the problem that I have with audiobooks. I stopped reading audiobooks on a regular really? basis for probably. Three or four years. Uh, and then I've recently slowly started picking it back up because I've been in the podcast world, like just listening to lots and lots of podcasts or editing podcasts, mainly listening to them. So now I have to figure out how to balance all of those uh, podcasts, you know, listening, editing, audiobooks, listening, editing. Oh, <laughs> so, but yeah, no, I like it. It's keeping me engaged, keeping me interested in the story yeah I, I find myself going more through phases of like sometimes i'm on an audiobook kick and that's when i get behind on a lot of podcasts and then i'll go on a podcast kick and then i catch up on a ton of stuff like back catalog like the back couple of weeks of of, of dtns or something yeah now i listen to an hour of dtns every day so that doesn't help me at all you know <laughs> Uh, GDI. Good day, Internet. <laughs> That's how they started out. All, all the hosts go around and say, Good day, Internet. Ah. For the okay. Patreons. Cool. Makes sense now. I, I was wondering where the name came from. Yeah. So that, I think, a wrap for DM79. Show notes and more information are available at youronpay.com slash DM79. We'll see how much I clicked during this episode. And if I have to oh, it's over now. Recording. Like, yeah, just uh, after I mention it, like, I haven't heard anything. Interesting. Anyways, um, yeah. So on that distracting note, he's on Twitter at Damasi, D A M A S H E. I'm on Twitter at Payon, P A Y O W N. And the show's on Twitter. Let's see if you can remember it. At the DM series. 